Here we are at chapter five, the chemistry of seawater. There are inputs and outputs to the chemistry of seawater. <clears throat> this image I'm really is, realizing is a little blurry, but the seawater is interacting with processes in the atmosphere and the lithosphere and the asthenosphere through volcanism. So the atmosphere is a place where there's going to be evaporation. So water through precipitation falls into the ocean and then that water also is going to be evaporating from the surface of the ocean. You see that here with these squiggly lines in the middle. And then uh, water also is going to be running off of our continental crust into the ocean. That river water is bringing with it dissolved ions as well as sediments from the continental crust. There is um, a, off the edge of the continents, the continental shelf. If there's instability, there will be turbidity currents and that will also bring um, lithogenous sediments into the um, ocean basin. pH levels fluctuate throughout the ocean and throughout time. So that that chemistry matters, that addition and subtraction of um, um, acids. There is also uh, metamorphic activity that happens around the mid-ocean ridge. A metamorphic process called metasomatism is creating new minerals within those basalts and gabbros at the mid-ocean ridge. The mid-ocean ridges also are going to be releasing different ions into seawater. There, all of those background geological processes are going to be in concert with ecological processes. So organisms, plants and animals also are gonna be changing and affecting the chemistry of seawater. Okay, seawater. Uh, these are um, salt here on the left is, is sodium and on the right is chlorine. Water, remember from previous discussions, is dipolar, is a polarized molecule. And therefore, it is what we call the universal solvent. It pulls apart other molecules. So in this case, the negative oxygens are gonna be attracted to the positive sodium. Over here, the positive hydrogens are gonna be attracted to the negative chlorines. And they're gonna pull apart that molecule. Sodium chloride is salt, but water pulls that apart and uh, the seawater is salty. Oh, there's those words there. All right, how do we measure uh, salt concentration? Here's a manatee. It is um, a unit of concentration, how much salt per volume of water. So we can do it by volume or by weight or by um, moles. So really getting into chemistry words here. So by weight, it would be something like a certain amount of grams of salt per a kilogram of water. We can change those units of weight, milligrams. <clears throat> and whatnot, volume would be um, like grams per liter. So liters are a volume of water. We can also, again, do it by the molecular concentration. How many moles of sodium or chloride are in a kilogram or a liter? All right, so how do we report salinity? So that would be um, like give, telling someone the salinity of seawater. It is done by looking at um, a unit called per mil, and that is just like percent, except for percent is per 100, per mil is per 1,000. And the way you can think of it is, um, is in terms of grams per kilogram, a kilogram would be a unit of one, and there are 1,000 grams in that kilogram. So how many grams of salt water are per kilograms of water? So the, we'd say it in parts per thousand or per mil. Average seawater chemistry is, if you look at all of seawater, is around 35 per mil. And that translates pretty easily to percent with 3.5%.
So we can go back and forth with those percentages pretty easily. I think they do the per mil just to, to not have the decimal place. <laughs> okay, so what that means is if you have a 3.5% or 35 per mil, an average of 3.5% of the weight of seawater is going to be dissolved salt. And in a one kilogram sample of salt water, then you have 35 grams of salt, the other 965 grams, because there's a thousand grams in a kilogram, are going to be water. Different ways to look at it. So there are variations with salinity across um, the ocean basins. <clears throat> we call those spatial variations to over space. And the processes that affect salinity in the seawater are going to be evaporation, so taking water out, you're leaving salt behind. Precipitation is going to dilute salt water and make it less salty. Runoff from our rivers is going to bring fresh water in, so it decreases salinity. And freezing is going to increase salinity because freezing just freezes the hydrogen and the oxygen and leaves salt behind. So the more you freeze the water, the more concentrated the um, salt is going to be in the left behind water that's not frozen. Thawing adds water to the system, so that is going to dilute seawater. Uh, so here is a graph of what that looks like <clears throat> at uh, around zero around the equator in this area. That is where there's a lot of rain. And so the rain, precipitation, and there are rivers bringing water into the ocean basins decreases the salinity. All right, so here's what sea surface salinity looks like. The range here, I said the average was 35. It's going to range between 28 and 37 grams per kilogram or per mil. It's not a very big range. This seawater is pretty um, stable with its salinity. The low values, the really low values in the um, 20s, are going to be places where rivers empty into the ocean basins, and the high values are going to be places where ice is forming or where there's high evaporation rates and it leaves the salt behind.